Check forward damage control. Yes, sir. We weren't trying to save Traeger, were you, sir? There's no outpost close enough for him to reach. I want you to address the crew. Tell them I'm now in command of the ship. Sure you want her, Vance? Kind of messed her up. Rest in peace, Jacob Brown.
As we have been for the last seven hours, we are continuing to call you the So what'd you get? Well, I got tens. I got straight tens on everything except psychosocial adjustments. Well, what exactly did Dr. Morgan say? That a 9.3 is very good for someone five years younger than his classmates. And that I'm, quote, very advanced for someone born in the year 2074. Well, then? Ooh. Ooh. Every time you say, well, then, like that, you follow it by something completely rational. Yeah. Well, I don't feel like being rational right now, Jonathan. I feel like I'm sick of being a kid genius. You're not. I was a kid genius. Was? You are a kid super genius whose science grades are still breaking records. I'm old. Well, then? I wanted that 10, Jonathan. As with its safe zone, for all categories other than those otherwise notified. As we have been for the last seven hours, we are continuing to call your attention to an HW470 condition. Got it? Repeat, HW470 condition. Tonight's forecast, scattered showers and acceptable oxygen level. Yeah, sure. I hate this stuff. <gasps> I'm not breathing. You sure? Hey. I got your purse. Excuse us. Excuse us. Here's your purse. Are you all right, ma'am? Thanks. Oh, so silly. When I left home, I forgot my breather. Oh, I've got an extra one. Well, thank you. Oh, don't want to trouble you. Is there anything else we can do for you, ma'am? Oh, don't you worry about me. I'll be all right. I'll just sit right here for a few minutes, and I'll be as right as rain. Excuse me? Oh, it's only an old expression, dear. You wouldn't remember it. Well, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. You should enjoy the next week as you have this week. The level of advisory in the extended future. All right, is rain. Jonathan, sugar level is zero, seven and medium. Also advised reduction of salt intake by 1.5. Affirmative. Affirmative. Your order. Veggie bio burger, the works. Bio burger, made of French fry, now the chip. No. I'll take those. Change that, yes. Great. Nutri-shake. With or without biocycline. Without. End of order. Please use table 03. Thank you. Account overdrawn. Repeat overdrawn. What do you mean account overdrawn? I made a deposit just this afternoon. Account overdrawn. Repeat overdrawn. Next customer, please. Jonathan. No. Please. Lend me your hand. I'll pay you back. This is the third time this week, B. I've had a stressful day. My blood sugar's low. Oh, you used that one last time. Hey, Jonathan. Yes, you will. Medium, your order, please. Uh, three super burgers with extra sauce, a Nutri Shake, two LG chips with Dyna Dip, one Benzo Shake, a Thermo Chips with Amino Sauce. The problem is. I'm competing against myself. Every class I take, I keep raising the curve. No matter how well I do, they expect me to do better. They also expect you to get around to taking a few classes outside your major, Beanie. Like music appreciation. Mm. Requirements, Beanie. You can't keep putting them off forever. I could break into the computer transcripts and put that I've already taken those classes. Don't even think about it. I wouldn't really do it. But it sure would make things a lot more fun. Thank you for eating at Bio Burgers, a division of Fujiyama Hydroponic Farms of Akron, Ohio. Let's go, let's go. Priority briefing command. Priority briefing command. Priority briefing command. Priority 
This isn't our flight group. I know. Who are these people? I don't know. I recognize a few of them. Just the ones in my classes. Beanie, do you have any idea what's going on? Why, well, Lonnie? Not a clue. Who's that? La Sen's own friend of mine. He's cute. Uh, Sally? Uh, I, I don't know if you remember me. I'm Jonathan Hayes. Jonathan, yes, I remember you. You went on to command school, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, sorry to hear about your brother. Thank you. What happened to your brother? He was on the Vanguard Explorer. Oh, sorry. I'm Huxley Wells, Navigation. Sally Arthur, MD. This is Jesse Beanstock. Beanstock? Yeah, Fee Five Full Farm. You call me Bean. Lonnie Maiori, Flight Control School. This is Les. Hi. I've heard about you, haven't I? You're the IQ kid with the alien life forms fixation. He likes little green men. Cadets, be seated. And may I offer my congratulations on your outstanding achievement records. They've qualified you to serve aboard the Earth Star Voyager. Voyager is our newest interstellar ship. I have the honor to have been appointed her captain. Latest projections indicate a worsening of our outer radiation belts. They're about to hit maximum where they will remain for five years. But, sir, why not wait the five years? Look outside, Jonathan. This planet's in trouble. Before she vanished six years ago, Vanguard explorers sent out probes. We've just received a report from one of them. It gave us the location of that, Berenson Star. And in orbit around it is a planet we've named Demeter. We haven't been able to decode all the information yet. This is the best picture we can give you. We have some readings of an acceptable atmosphere, but we're still not sure if it can support life. Voyager's mission is to answer that question, because if Demeter is suitable, we are going to have to move there. It'll take at least 40 years to build the ships necessary to move everyone. And the star's 18.7 light years away. A trip like that, even with fusion generators in the Bauman Drive, that'd take at least 25 years round trip. 26, Beanie. We're factoring in a year for exploration of the planet. I'll be 40. Cryogenic sleep will be available to all crew members. For every three days we spend on the trip, we'll only age two, but we will age. That's why we've made our selections from the academy, because you're all young. And if telemetry indicates I'm past my peak, then Jonathan will be captain on the return voyage. All right! Now, if the radiation projections are accurate, once we're out there, we won't be able to communicate with Earth. Sir, what are the weapon specifications? This is a peaceful mission of exploration, Jonathan. Weapons are not a high priority. But the OTZ, sir. The outlaw technology zone controlled half this planet and came very close to controlling the other half before we beat them. It was rumor of an OTZ outpost. The outpost was discovered two years ago and destroyed by Triton Corsair. Admiral Beasley's ship? Is he still out there? Yes, Huxley. In fact, he conceived Earth Star Voyager and personally selected each of you for this mission. We will leave in 48 hours. <laughs> So that's it, Gretchen. We're only allowed this one call. I just wanted you to know that I'll never forget you. I'll be fine. There was that one time, oh, you couldn't have been more than three. You kept saying you wanted more shocky ice cream. That's what you called chocolate. Mom! And your father thought it was so cute the way you kept saying shocky, he kept giving it to you. Spent the whole night throwing up. I can't ask you to wait for me, Marion. But I wanted you to know I'll never forget you. I might never see you again. Mom, you... I'm proud of you. And I love you. I guess that's really about it. Mom. Thank you. <laughs> for everything. I love you, too. 
I mean, I'll be thinking of you, Roxanne. The name is Jeannie, thanks. Well, of course it's Jeannie. I knew that. It's just that I always think of you as a Roxanne. I mean, it suits you so much better than Jeannie. Then who's Roxanne? You say goodbye to your boyfriend. He'll wait for you. Anyone would. I don't have a boyfriend. Who did you call? My parents. I'll probably never have one now. What? A boyfriend. What do you think all those crew members with short hair are? You've got 26 years. I'd say your chances are better than a 50-50. <laughs> aboard. I'd like you to meet Brody Arnold, physical fitness technician. This is your command team. Jonathan Hayes. Do you have my promise? You'll end this voyage in better shape than you started. You'll excuse me, sir? Excuse me. Built like that, he's got to be a real souffle in the brain department. Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan, get a look at this. 40 lounges, uh, three libraries, an interdenominational chapel, and a nursery. You know, as captain, I have the power to perform marriage ceremonies. Is it mandatory? <laughs> the whole purpose of this mission is to ensure the survival of the species. Follow me. And I'll show you the bridge. Don't worry, I'll handle your quota. <laughs> Isn't he a bit young for you? <laughs> you sent some? Yeah. Here it is. Home sweet home. This is incredible. Hello, Beanie. Priscilla? Priscilla, you on this ship? Who else, Beanie? Wow, that's super! That's the supercomputer? Oh, Priscilla, I'd like you to meet Huxley. Hello, Huxley. I've been reading your records over and over. How'd she get my records? Excuse me, Captain Forbes. The Triton Corsair has just arrived alongside. It is in parallel orbit with Earth Star Voyager, and Admiral Beasley requests permission to address the crew. Bring it in, please. Officers and crew of Earth Star Voyager, the importance of your mission dwarfs anything I can say to you. Nonetheless, I offer my best wishes and my thanks, because now Triton Corsair can get on with a mission of her own. I chose you all for this voyage. Do me proud. I wish I were young enough to go with you. But of course I will be with you in spirit.
Lieutenant Matthews. Standing by for navigational coordinates, sir. Plot course 219L475W, and put Earth Star Voyager on my screen. Good luck, Voyager. You're going to need it. Guidance report. Flight path clear, Mr. Hayes. Bioscience? All crew members read positive, Mr. Hayes. Telemetry and navigational, Mr. Wells. Trajectory 39AX 24B plotted in, John. Sir? Your ship, Captain Forbes. <clears throat> uh, just one second, sir. Propulsion status report, Mr. Beanstock. Fusion thrust engines and Bellman drive check, sir. Now, Captain Forbes. Sorry. All engines boost. Mr. Beanstack, compensate acceleration, please. Yes, sir. Work begin. What's that? Antique silver dollar. It's my lucky charm, and it does tricks. Watch it, Huxley. That's wonderful, Huxley. Not to mention original. Oh, then maybe you like this. Huxley. Captain Forbes. Permission to break, Mr. Wells. Approaching junk belt. Space pollution at its finest. Deflection shields, Mr. Hayes. Standard course plotted on screen, sir. Estimated crossing time, 10 minutes. And you'll see some speed. It's a mess, isn't it? No other way to dispose of it. All station alert. Disturbance. Specify. Voyager's fusion thrust is affecting the junk orbit. They're starting to destabilize. Shields to maximum. Check power systems under load. Mr. Wells, available evasive course. Autopilot scanning for clear passage. Look out! Forbes, shields are moving towards overload. Shields to intermittent. But, sir, some of it could get through. We don't lessen the power drain. All of it will get through. Actually, get us on another course. There are none. The radiation belt is closing them off. Then give me manual control now. Yeah! <laughs> nice work. I didn't think we could do that with a ship this big. I didn't either. Damage report, Mr. Beanstock. Damage at six locations, including airlock number three. Deploying repair crews now. Sir. I'll go supervise. Looks like you've got things under control. Jonathan, let's not ever do that again, okay? 
I don't know when they taught you that, but I'm glad you didn't cut class that day. <laughs> I learned that when I was seven years old, playing Dodger. Repairs completed. All patched up, Captain. Mr. Beanstalk said to proceed to Sector 5. Carry on. door secure space ejection process commencing Forbes to bridge Captain Forbes calling the bridge prepare for egress bridge malfunction in outer airlock three Jonathan Jonathan can you hear me prepare for egress Okay. I mean, you don't have to. <laughs> and so I was born in this uh, in Switzerland. She's a really nice girl. He's a genius. I well, sure. I mean, Beanie. Excuse me. <laughs> Can't get a reading from number three airlock. They've completed repairs. They just called in. Nice repair job. Beanie, I'm going to want to talk to the team that worked on that airlock. Bridge. Forbes to bridge. Captain Forbes calling the bridge. All station alert, airlock three. Jonathan, listen to me. Egress in 10 seconds. Warning, decompression commencing. What happened? I don't know. Look, Jonathan, complete the mission. Keep going, promise me. Airlock three, cut sector power, terminate egress. egress. Promise you will. Keep going. Egress completed. trying to evaluate, sir, but we do have a report of one fatality. Captain Forbes is dead. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Krieger. Keep me advised. Sir. So now Mr. Hayes is captain. I hope I was right. <laughs> But I know I'm right.
Thank you. Your repairs have been confirmed. You weren't responsible. You may go. Yes, sir. Jonathan, I certified the airlock door myself. There's no way it could have jammed. But it did. Maybe you forgot something. I didn't forget anything. I went over everything twice. It had to be a computer malfunction. What do we do now? I don't know. It's your decision, Captain. Well, do we abort the mission or do we go on? We can't abort. Got it. It's right here. They buried it in one of the other programs, but it's an airlock door command. And it's not my entry code. Jonathan, this was no accident. Somebody did it on purpose. Who would want to kill Captain Forbes? Starboard radar sensor needs extra vehicular repairs now. Huxley's scanning for someplace with docking facilities. I'm Dr. Leland Eugene. Mental health officer, I believe you wanted to see me, Captain. I, I'm sorry we haven't met sooner. What do people usually call you, Leland Lee? Dr. Eugene. I see. Well, Dr. Eugene, I want a full biopsych review of all crew members. Why do you ask? Because of Captain Forbes. I assure you, I went over every mental fitness profile myself. I'm sure that as you gain experience, you'll find that accidents of this sort can always be attributed to the technical staff. Faulty maintenance, shoddy repair work. I want to see your report in two hours, Doctor. Two hours? There are 116 people on board. <clears throat> 115. Nonetheless, I couldn't possibly finish for at least 24 hours, even then. Two hours. Jonathan? Are you all right? Yeah. Sure. Fine. Truth is, I'm scared, Beanie. I know. I'm not sure I can handle this. Sure you can. That's why they put you here. Oh, I wish I had your confidence. Anytime you need it, you got it. Thanks, Beanie. That's what study partners are for, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're coming up on Blue Star Gamma. I think it's what we're looking for. Well, of course it is, Huxley. abandoned 40 years ago and it's still generating power. Priscilla, give me an image. Sorry it took so long. That's all right. I find no information about the stability of its orbit. Jonathan, we're going to need to make extra vehicular repairs. It's got docking facilities. Captain, there's a life force present. It could be dangerous. I wonder if it's maybe... Little green men in a flying saucer? Hungry little green men? Huxley, be serious. Let's go for it. Mr. Wells, while repairs are going on, you and I'll investigate. could survive here. Not even Peony's little green men.
might not be green, but it eats. System scan for ID, please. Captain Jacob Dryden Brown, Space Science Academy, class of 2074, graduated third in class. I got a CM weightlessness training, brought down my grade point average. Appointed captain of spacecraft Vanguard Explorer in year 2080. Ship vanished in 2082. All aboard, declare dead. Surprise. Captain Brown, did anyone else from the Explorer survive? My brother was on your ship. Lieutenant Vance Arthur. I'm sorry. What happened to your ship? It was destroyed. And how did you escape? The capsule. So much for the captain going down with his ship. It's all right with you. I think I better talk with you, commanding officer. I'm the commanding officer. How long before we get back to Earth? Only six years. <gasps> We're on an exploratory mission to Berenson Star. It's just my luck. Finally hit your ride, and I'm going in the wrong direction better than where you were. <laughs> what is this? Good ship kindergarten? Do you ever feel a compulsion that's Let's say, not I can save you some time here. 
Yes, no, maybe, none of your business. You can fill in those answers any way you want. Your brainwave profile suggests possible delayed stress trauma. Really? Come to think of it, there is one thing. Lately I've been getting this uh, weird urge, you know. Like I want to start throwing things around, bashing hands together. Is there any particular stimulus that brings on this urge? People who ask questions. Dr. Eugenia, I'm ready if you'd like to continue this later. Let me guess. You're going to tell me he's really a nice guy once I get to know him. No. He's always like that. Take off your clothes, please. <laughs> Does that mean I'm forgiven? <laughs> your clothes, Captain. Or I can put you in quarantine for the next few years. This is a shower? Ultrasound. Stand in the center. Keep your mouth closed if you have any dental work. slight vitamin deficiency. I've had some supplements put in your diet. Apart from that, you're in amazingly good shape. Where do I bunk down? We have cryo sleep chambers. Where do I go if I don't want other people around? We have privacy lounges. They have locks, I hope. Yes. I'll show you where the supply section is. You're a lot younger than your brother was. Nine years. He was a good officer, wasn't he? Yeah. He was. I just don't trust him, that's all. Why not? Didn't you see the guy? He looks like something dredged out of a waste dump. Unauthorized personnel on bridge. Acknowledge, no further action. So what would further action have been? Computerized security would have been instantaneously deployed. That's very clever. Whatever it is. Uh, Priscilla. Stupid name for a computer. Well, Dr. Bauman named it after his daughter. Bauman? Oh, that's right. You wouldn't know. Dr. Joseph Bauman, he invented this. And oh. Joseph Bauman? Chubby little guy who talks to himself? It's how he works things out, by talking to himself. You mean the guy who was always babbling about running elastic through the universe was right? Of course. The Bauman drive is what's going to get this ship where it's going. Bauman drive? The elastic thread is only the layman's explanation. Technically, it works by... Be careful. Why, it's not classified. No, but it took you five hours last time you tried to explain it. I mean, you understand all this stuff. Of course, I helped develop it. Now, why didn't I figure that out? Captain Brown is notorious for misjudging people. What? You two know each other? Priscilla? Well, I didn't think it would be polite to mention it. Well, what exactly is this thing? It's a computer hooked up into an analog of Priscilla Bauman's brain. Oh, boy. So you do know her? Well, uh, sort of used to go out. We would have, if you'd ever shown up. She's not really in there, is she? No. Uh, it's got all her thoughts, all her memories. But the real Priscilla Bauman's back on Earth. Am I? Good. Just try a little 
little more weight. Not bad. That's 180 pounds. More weight, Lonnie? That's great. A little more back into it. There you go. Hurt those pecs. Trust me, I am. Yes, sir. You just keep that up. Twelve more, Captain. Good. Very good. Last I heard, there were laws against torture. Good point. Present yourself for court martial, Brody. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> You want me to set you up? Oh, no, thanks. I'm just uh, browsing. All crew members are required to work out to maintain muscle tone. I'm not a crew member. But what about your body? What about it? Aren't you worried about letting it go? I'm a nice guy. I let it go wherever it wants to. Besides, I only needed to carry my brains around. You enjoying yourself? I'm just seeing what a captain's duties are these days. Uh, interesting ship you got here, Captain. A lot more entertaining than Blue Star Gamma. How long were you there? Five years, seven months, three days. It landed right about the time you were starting on solid food. As a matter of fact, I was in my second year at the Academy. There you were, bright-eyed, well-scrubbed, your head crammed full of dreams of space and glory, am I right? Yes. We were all like that. Reality's a little different, huh? I still got a lot to learn. Well, at least you know that much. You're all right, Captain Kidd. Just remember, the books don't teach you everything. Excuse me, Johnson. I need to talk to you. Yeah, what about? Dr. Eugene, I've been kind of keeping an eye on him. And? I think you ought to interrogate him about Captain Forbes' death. <laughs> Why? He hasn't done anything specific. It's just this feeling I've got. Lonnie, I can't haul the guy in for interrogation just because you got a feeling about him. My feelings are usually pretty accurate, especially when they're this strong. I'll think about it, okay? Lonnie? Okay. Where are you going? I'm scheduled for cryo sleep. Just remember what I said. That's enough. Good work, Captain. Sorry, I don't know my own strength sometimes. I'll get you some wine. And the back brace. <laughs> you kill me, Captain. You really do. You don't kill me first. Hey, one right after another. Stay healthy, okay? <coughs> See ya. <sighs> Red Star Voyager departed Blue Star Gamma, proceeding on established course. There is a change in life status, sir. Plus one, unidentified. Well then. Mr. Krieger, identify the uh, intruder. Only if absolutely necessary will we make contact with Voyager. Interesting development. I can do for you, Jake. <sighs> Cut that out, man. It's contagious. I'm sorry. Maybe you ought to go check into cryosleep. Um, no, I'm I'm fine. I'll just wait until Lonnie gets back on shift, 
And um, after that, there's, there's a series running in the vid lounge, if anyone wants to go. Huxley, are you going? Huh? I could meet you there. Priscilla, how could you be there if you're here? Don't be silly. I'm all over the ship. You are? Anywhere. Anytime. I think Priscilla's got a crush on you, Huxley. Oh, real funny. Uh, actually, it's not. I mean, it is possible. It's one of the things we were worried about when we put her together. Beanstalk, what are you telling me? Well, it's Priscilla Bauman's brain up there. I mean, it's not only got all her thoughts, but her feelings. And, uh, habits. Anywhere, anytime. Captain, uh, I've got an unidentified blip. Configuration? It's right on the edge of sensors. Augment. There it is. It's on navigation, too, sir. Whatever it is, it's really moving. Alter course two degrees. It's changed course to match ours. And what? They're out of range again, even on augment. But I picked up weapons. Heavy weapons. What's your arsenal? Hand weapons only. Whose idea was that? Well, we've got the components for long-range weapons. We just haven't been able to sort them all out yet. I mean, it takes months to assemble them. All right, we've got two choices here. We can wait until Mr. X out there catches up with us, or we can make us a weapon. Like what? You ever heard of a railgun? That's practically Stone Age. Which do you prefer, a non-existent laser weapon or a well-aimed rock? Captain Brown, we don't even know what the blip is yet. I mean, they might be friendly. And they might not be. Now, I'll go and scrounge some parts. You just find me another set of arms. If they're attached to a brain that knows something about electronics, that'd be even better. Take Mr. Beanstalk. <laughs> You're kidding. He's the best. And what's he gonna be when he grows up? Still the best. Come on, infant. Still out of range? Sorry, I can't find it. Uh, Captain? Or Mr. Brown? Jake's fine, shrimp boat. Beanie's fine, Jake. Okay. You were saying, Beanie? You sure you know what you're doing there? Making a rail gun. You know how they operate? A series of electromagnetic force fields which amplify consecutively. Most effective when used at close range. I'll take that as a yes. I'm sorry. You catch on fast. Soft and primitive. Just remember what Thoreau said. Who? So much for modern education. Thoreau, Henry David, 19th century American writer. Spent a couple of years in the woods, living in a hut by himself. Why? Because he wanted to. Believed in getting down to bare basics. Simplify, simplify, simplify. That's simple, all right. I'm gonna start taking down specs here. I already have. I don't see you writing anything. What is your IQ anyway? I'm not really sure. It's, it's kind of off the scale. But you made him crazy at the academy. The research team must have hooked you up to every test monitor they could get their little fingers on. How'd you know? Well, I dealt with that sort before. They have a tendency to forget they're fiddling around with real life human beings. Must have been tough on you. I met Jonathan in my first year there. He ran interference for me a lot. Well, what do you think so far? I think it might work. Thanks.
it is. Well, it's very good. Uh, how long before it's finished? It is finished. Test mode, please, Mr. Beanstalk. What's wrong, Jake? Simplify, simplify, simplify. So now, all we have to do is rig this thing so you can fire the railgun from the bridge. You want to help me with this, too? Yes, sir. Jonathan, there's a malfunction in cryosleep sector H9. Sleep chamber H9. Come on, come on. Lonnie! Lonnie! Help me move her. Gone below the threshold of consciousness. There's nothing we can do but put her back in cryo sleep and give her the chance to heal herself. What are her chances? I'm not sure. It's gonna take a long time. How many people have access codes to the sleep chambers? Anyone with grade four or higher. Which includes Dr. Eugene, doesn't it? Yes. Where is he? Well, I saw him heading towards the airlock when Jake and I were... I have an update on my biopsych review. Very convenient timing on your part, isn't it? I wasn't satisfied. I kept working on it. I'll bet you did. And I suppose you found something very weird about, uh, let's say, my profile. Since you mention it, you do display a tendency towards overcautiousness. Of course. According to the review, it's a result of your ability to see all sides of any given question. This is a good quality in a commander, really. But it may eventually lead to a kind of stalling out. Let me guess here. You found something questionable. With everybody, Sally, Huxley, Beanie, Lonnie, everybody except for yourself, huh? You want a full rundown? Please. Mr. Beanstalk. Beanie, as you insist on calling him, and I should tell you that nickname is a bad idea. He's going through a bad time right now. To call him Beanie, a very childish name, is only going to reinforce his perception of himself as an immature individual. Captain. Yeah. Priscilla, I told you not to bother him now. You stay put. What's going on, Huxley? Jonathan, I'm sorry, but Priscilla's having one of her fits up here. She thinks she there's... knows. I do not have time for this. What are you two talking about? She says there's some kind of glitch in that rail... Look, dump. Captain Brown put in a whole bunch of new circuitry in airlock 19. It's not tied in with the main system yet. Something's wrong. With the gun? No, with the... Aha. What? It's there again, Captain. 
It's in the airlock, and you better do something. We're not finished. Just Forbes and Lonnie. Plan? Come on, Brody. You're not smart enough to think of a plan all by yourself. You're too sure of that. profile was forged. Very clever job, I might add. I had to run three different filter programs before I discovered it. I was trying to find you to tell you. Back to you, Gene. I'm sorry. For what? Just sorry, that's all. What about your little party in the airlock? Nice going. Oh, yeah, I'm doing just great. I got two crewmen floating around in deep space, another in cryo sleep for who knows how long. And it's sheer dumb luck we haven't lost any more. Sheer dumb luck's the best kind to have sometimes. Yeah, sure. Okay, then well, why don't you just crawl away somewhere and cry about it? I mean, look at the mess you're in. You're an inexperienced captain. You're commanding an inexperienced crew. You're in over your head. Why don't you just quit? I can't do that. There you go. Look, kid. Captain. You're bright enough to figure this out for yourself eventually. But right now, you don't have time. So I'm going to explain it to you. You're responsible for everybody on board. I know. But self-pity doesn't go along with that. It's just too bad, but the captain doesn't get that luxury. What luxuries does he get? None that I can think of. Jonathan! Oh. Beanie found something in the gym. I think you better come take a look. Captain will be right there, Huxley. Captain's on his way. As near as I can figure, it's a particle beam transmitter. Well, this is what our friends are using to track us. Smash that thing! No. Wait a second. They're following that thing's signal. But if it's one place, and we're somewhere else... Mr. Brown, you think your railgun can fire a well-aimed rock? Give me ten minutes, Captain. Huxley. Trajectory input. Any and fire. Hey, 
Excuse me, Admiral, but Earth Star Voyager has just radically altered course. Adjust coordinates accordingly. Huxley, get that ship back on course. It's changing course. They went for it. Nice work. I know. <clears throat> of course, my pal, the professor there, had a little to do with it. <clears throat> had a lot to do with it. Punch me in for 40 pounds. Yeah, sure. I guess I'm lucky you can't actually drop these things on your toes. It's funny. No, I mean it. I never thought I'd laugh at anything you said. I guess that's pretty much the way everybody feels about me. Well, you could loosen up a little. I know that. What I'd say to a patient like me. What else would you say? Oh, the usual stuff. Be honest with your emotions. Oh, be careful with that one. There are times when you can be honest with them. There are times when they just get in the way of your job. Wouldn't you agree, Doctor? Well, yes. Tell me, Mr. Brown, did you ever think of going into psychiatry? My own mind's enough for me to handle. Forget Mr. Brown. The name's Jake. Leland. Leland? As any good shrink would say, blame my parents. <laughs> you already ran that program. Yeah, I, I know. I just like to be sure. Does he make you nervous? Who? How's it going? Excuse me. Those engineers up there are crazy. I mean, they didn't know what they were doing. What's that to do? Oh, boy, do I remember that. What? First big crush. Oh, no, I, I don't remember a thing about it. Liar. <sighs> Mine was back in first year. Remember uh, Professor Morrison? The bald guy who taught first level man? <laughs> I used to pretend I didn't understand the lesson so I could go talk to him in his office. <laughs> You're kidding, you? <laughs> when I found out he was married with three kids, I quit eating. <laughs> I was trying to arrange it so that he would find me picturesquely starved to death on his doorstep. <laughs> what happened? I got hungry. What about you? What was your first big crush? Oh, that was a long time ago, Sally. Was she at the Academy? Marta Johansson. No. Oh. <laughs> well, at least tell me what she looked like. She was blonde, and she went into medicine. There's an interspeak distress signal coming in. A blip? No, that's moving away. This is something different. 50,000 miles dead ahead. Relay the signal. Nearest craft, please assist. That's it. No ID code. Priscilla. Yes, Captain Hayes? Distress signal report. Can you identify source and vital data? Well, of course I can. Some people never change. Proceed. 
The World's Fair. The what? Expo Tomorrow, most recent and last in a series of world fairs, held year 2020 on a man-made satellite. Huge failure due to cost overruns, financial corruption, and all the usual bureaucratic boondoggles. Project abandoned and fired into deep space. We don't like our failures hanging around, do we? Just the facts, please. Attendance demographics as follows. On second thought, terminate access. We can't ignore a distress signal. It's against regulations. Yeah, and this whole trip is strictly by the book. She's right. But don't answer the signal, Les. Don't let them know we're coming. Sally Huxley and I will take the shuttle down and investigate. Mr. Beanstack will be in charge of the ship while we're gone. I think I'll go along. With the captain's permission, of course. Yes, that's what we've been following, but the scan indicated no sign of Voyager, sir. She's not on course. We know that much. Continue cross-analysis until located. Yes, sir. Although I must say, they seem to be doing quite well without us. This is tomorrow. I think I'll take yesterday. Huxley, you getting a direction from the distress signal? Yeah, that way. And uh, you guys let me know what you find, okay? Just kidding. Nobody else made it off the ship. Who are these kids? Yeah, they're all right. How did you get here? Oh, we brought down the shuttle when we picked a up a ship. A... You've got a ship? Yeah. Then we've got to hurry. Oh, wait, no. a, wait a second, Willie. We, we picked up a distress signal. That's theirs. They leave it on so that if any ship comes by, they can lure it down here. Who is they? The OTZ. They run this place. We gotta hurry. They'll know you're here. They can't know. Our telemetry says there are no sensors here. This is the outlaw technology zone. They know everything.
Welcome, Jonathan Hayes. We detected your ship several hours ago. I've been expecting you. But not you, Captain Brown. Vance? They call him Top Dog now. He runs this place. You and I got a little unfinished business. Lock them up. <laughs> badly damaged in the fighting, so they came here, those that were left. I'm sorry. You said the OTZ runs this place? Yeah, well, they sure don't look the way I thought they would. Real work goes on in the labs underground. Those are just the warriors. They live like that to keep in practice. In practice for what? I don't know. Never been able to find out. They've got something big planned. Something they call assembly. Who comes to challenge? I, whistle stick challenge. Beat. Got some kind of magic. Well, anybody can get beaten. Verification, Admiral. Object orbiting Expo tomorrow identified as Earth Star Voyager. Why did they go there? Never mind. Continue closing. can't get a response from the shuttle. They're probably still out exploring. They've been gone six hours. Feeny, I have a blip. Ah, oh, it's bedtime. Well, it's 
not the shuttle. It's coming from the opposite direction. Identification? No ID, but it matches the record of the one that was chasing us before. Orders, Mr. Beanstalk? We're gonna need backup on the bridge. Give me navigation, engineering, life science, and communications. proposal for you. Coming from you, it ought to be a winner. Pity you couldn't command as well as you could talk. What do you want? The access codes to the Voyager. Pretty greedy, Vance. Still haven't paid me for the first ship you stole. Give me the codes, and I'll let you and your friends live. Strangest thing, Vance. For some reason, I just don't trust you. The codes! As you wish. I'll still take the ship. Oh, you will. Come on, Vance. You may be top dog of this loony carnival, but that doesn't make you anything better than a second-rate thief. Come on, Vance. Anybody can challenge, right? Or is top dog afraid? I give you ten minutes to prepare a fight to the death, Jacob Brown. You got it. Lip still closing. How long before they get here? Four hours. Take your positions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Les, I'm going to need your help here. We're going to need to plot a new course, Kenny. Yes, sir, Beanie. You're not going to leave them down there, are you? Of course not. Then what are you doing? We're going to try to hide. I hope Jonathan can still find us. with a big fella there. Even for a last meal, this is lousy. Pick a hand. Huxley. Hux, this is no time for fooling around. All right. If no one wants to pick a hand, then I will. I... Hux! This one. Huxley, I could kiss you. I knew you'd come around sooner or later. Nice work. Maybe I can get them interested in the fun and games. You watch for your chance, let yourselves out, and scamper for the shuttle. Will you all get out of this? Yeah, right. Prepare for combat! Excuse me, I've got a score to settle. You're a good captain. Just remember that. Might even be as good as me one day. Come on!
Are you prepared, Jacob Brown? Ready as I'll ever be. Excuse me, Beanie. I just thought of something. If you adjust this coordinate from 2.7 to 2.9... I already thought of that. Well, it could increase the maneuvering capability. I know that, and it's what I'm doing right now. Oh, so sorry to interrupt the genius at work. Apology accepted. Thank heavens. I mean, I would hate to have the real brains of the ship mad at me. Priscilla... But, as long as the apology's been accepted... Priscilla, will you please shut up? Priscilla, Beanie's under a lot of pressure right now. Priscilla? First you say shut up, then you say talk. Make up your minds. He's worried about them down there. Well, he's not the only one. You can do it, Beanie.
down that goes. Nobody's ever come back and tell us. Those clowns thinking you're magic, don't you, Vance? Look at him! Electromagnetic force field in there. Can I taught you how to make those things, Vance? Because I never got around to teaching you how to neutralize them. There goes your magic. Finish it! for the victor. Okay. Cut me down. Yeah. 
Way back to the shuttle by now. That's a great belt, Jake. You always have an ace in the hole. Better hurry, Captain. They'll be looking for you. I think I always wanted to be popular. Aliens on bridge. Aliens on bridge. Aliens cleared, Priscilla. Who are these guys? This is Willie and Whistlestick. They're okay. Yeah, they decided to leave their party and join ours. Beanie, what's this orbit you've got going here? Took the shuttle half an hour to catch up with you. You were supposed to maintain standard distance. Jonathan. We had kind of a rough time down there. We didn't need to go trade. Jonathan, Jonathan wait a minute. We picked up that blip on our screen. It was coming straight for us. I didn't want to leave you, so I thought if we swung out, that maybe they'd have a harder time finding us. Beanie. You did exactly the right thing. We did it. We need to get them cleaned up. This way, gentlemen. Well, there's never a dull moment around here. I'll say that much. Is that blip still on the monitor? Affirmative. And still closing. Let's get out of here. First Star Voyager has departed Expo tomorrow orbit, sir. Course? Out of range, sir. Hmm. Change in overall life status on Voyager, sir. Plus or minus? Plus two. Commander Gardner, I'm afraid we have to take a trip for the fair. What happened to you, Vance? I... I was defeated. You know the rules here. Yes, I know the rules. But I certainly wasn't expecting you to... join the game. What was Voyager doing here? I lured her here. Why? I thought you'd be pleased. What happened? Jake Brown was aboard. Jake Brown? He challenged me. I had to fight him. Oh. I don't think you had to fight him. I think you wanted to fight him. Deadly sin, Lieutenant. Pride. I did it for you. You took over and destroyed Vanguard Explorer for me. You lured Earth Star Voyager off course for me. We can still catch her. I can still catch her. You're not gonna leave me here. You seem to be enjoying yourself. Admiral, take me with you. 
I can help you. I don't need you, Vince. Continue the games. was looking for some place to be by myself. No offense. No offense. I do want to say thank you. For what? For not killing my brother when you had the chance. You're welcome. my brother once you love somebody it's kind of hard to quit just because you ought to that's from a book i'm writing things i finally learned after getting hit over the head with them i'd like to read that when you finish it wait a second Actually, too young to understand. Why are you puffing? 
If you were down on X play, you'd be puffing too. I had my hands full up here. All I had to do was put a Voyager on automatic pilot. And all you had to do was pick some yo-yo's pocket. All right, so we're all heroes. Us and the little green men. Uh, Sonia, I think I'm done for today. Get up. You okay? Fine. It'll be all right. everything. Thanks, P. That's what friends are for. But I, I sort of made one up. Well, that's your day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I just figured it couldn't really hurt anything. Signal being received. Listen. I came here to tell you the truth, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I am here to tell it all. What's that? Oliver North. Who's he? An American Marine Lieutenant Colonel. What's he doing out here? He's not out here. Can't be. He's not. He said it in the summer of 1987 in Washington, D.C. I own silver! Away! North too? An overturned truck is really jammed things up on the floor of my world. So traffic is being diverted to the scene. This is Air Watch 19. This is the big sound of the big town rocking and reeling and hanging from the ceiling. Nifty 
Six-year trip, a ten-minute detour wouldn't hurt. Priscilla, follow that song. Your hips, Hux? <laughs> New object within scanning range. This is interesting. I'll put it on the screen. Metallic alloys? And big. We don't have stations out this far. Augment, Priscilla. It's a vehicle. The ship that's been following us? No, it can't be. Everything's dead. Propulsion system, life support, and there's a lot of damage. 40,000 miles in closing. Priscilla, maximum augmentation. There's nothing we're salvaging. The, the Vanguard's a dead ship. Not completely dead. Power's still functioning at minimum. Fifteen minutes. Why do you want to go back there, Jake? He wants to retrieve the ship's log, Hux. You know you don't have to. We believe you. Thanks. But I'd rather have it on record that I didn't lose my ship because I was taking a nap. All right, take Beanie. Hey, great. So if he gets left behind once more, he's gonna burst. I'll go, too. Okay. Prepare for transport. Captain Brown. 
Thank you. Carry on. I'm glad you're still... It's been a long time, Captain. Here, let me try. See, this is one of those 319XA models, which means that I'll have an override connection right here. How'd you know that? I learned it in history class. In history class, they tell us kings, queens, and uprisings. Now all I have to do is press these two buttons simultaneously. Oops. Oops. Damaged circuit. I think I just wiped out your... I sure did. What? Wiped out what? Your missile breakfast program. Well, that we can live without. I haven't wiped out a program since I was six years old. Could you move a little out of the way, please? What traffic? Ask. Air. Scout. What scout? That's it. I mean, the best I can do for you now is retrieve your log program. Ship traffic minimal. Jake, what's going on? Nobody should be out here but us. Whatever it is, it's still alive. What a relief. We've got to take it back to the Voyager. We do not. It's part human. Are you sure? Not the part it hit me with. <sighs> Hurts. Please. The fall. He feels pain. What kind of circuits did they use? She's right. We ought to take it back to the ship and examine it. 
before or after it takes apart the Voyager. Let's learn what we can from the thing and get rid of it. Come on. What are you doing? You two do whatever you want. I'm taking you back to the ship. I'm gonna be out of my mind. All right. Just remember who said this was a mistake. What is that? They invited a friend. It's a shell. That's what the OTZ was making back on Expo. What was it doing on the Explorer? The scouting. For the outlaw technology zone. Think you can get that log to tell us what ship traffic minimal is? Yeah. What are, yeah. You, what are you guys talking about? Jonathan, I need to get him to Medical Bay. No. Excuse me, ma'am, you don't want to do that. Those things, they're programmed to self-destruct if they're captured. You let him wake up, he's got enough explosives. He's hurt. I can keep him sedated. We'll defuse him. All right, let's do it. Go see if you can get a reading off that log. Yes, sir. Uh. Log program, Priscilla. Retrieve all data, please. Off this whole thing? I'll have to downgrade myself. Search for any ship traffic in the past six years. I'll also search for bridge intruder. Correlate that with all information regarding the outlaw technology zone. Working. I can talk while I'm working. What would you like to talk about? Huxley's birthday is tomorrow. Wouldn't you know she'd be the one to remember? Is there anything specific you'd like, Huxley? Or should I just surprise you? Now, this is interesting. Intruder on Vanguard Explorer verified. OTZ scout boarded minus two years, four months. Method of entry? Working. Mr. Beanstack, report to medical, please. Right away. Hey, you're the super brain on the ship. Could you program her out of our fixation, please? Oh, gee, Huxley, I'm really awful sorry. I mean, but Priscilla's awfully complicated. You can't change her programming without affecting all of her. I think we better not even try. Cheer up, Buxley. It could be worse. Hell, 58 women on board, and the only one who realizes what kind of man she's missing is a computer with no body. Huxley, you lack imagination. Method of entry retrieved. Yes. A vessel rendezvoused with Vanguard Explorer, leaving behind OTZ scout. Vessel? Origin and destination not logged. Identification unknown. See them when you were down there? We stayed as far away from them as we could, Captain. Do you know anything else about these shells? Only that they were making them. I never found out how they fit into their plan. What plan? Assembly. I never found out what that means either. Beanie, I need your help. Can you take a look at this, please? I don't believe it. His brain's at least half electronic. 62% to be precise. 38% organic. Oh. So they're wiring the circuits to the what's it there? Neurons. Neurons. And all this stuff is for motor control. And this stuff, I don't know. Those are attached to his pain centers. That's all they've left him to feel with. Nice guys. I've located the detonator. Can you defuse him? Yeah. It's got different levels of control. If you neutralize this, and you neutralize this, and you don't touch this, that'll do it. Gantry elevation, 48 centimeters.
Try 42 centimeters. Okay, you got it. I'm bringing him out of the anesthetic now. Will we be able to talk? I say we find out what we can, then turn him off. All the way off. We'll disconnect him, Sally. Are you feeling any pain now? No. You did that? Yes. Who are you? My name is Sally Arthur. I'm a doctor. You stop pain. Can you move? No. What's your name? Shall I respond? Yes. Unit designation SJ381. Why were you on board the Vanguard Explorer? To remove intruders, to gather and relay any pertinent information. To whom? The others. There are more like you. Yes. How many? Most recent output figure 2,780. Where are the others? En route to assembly. Where's that? No information. What will happen at assembly? Capability will be completed. Capability for what? Destruction. There is more pain. Please. That's enough. Let him rest now. Voyager located, sir. She's returned to predetermined course. Well done. Position located via transmission from shell SJ-381. SJ-381. Drone or warrior? Drone, sir. Scout. Continue. Apparently, Earth Star Voyager rendezvoused with Vanguard Explorer and retrieved it. It's on board, Voyager? Yes, sir. Deactivate shell immediately. We can't, sir. We're too far out of range. Commander Gardner, plot intercept course with Voyager now. Jonathan, Jonathan, why did you let that thing on board your ship? Too many things have been disconnected. It is distressful. I think I can help that. I've given you back some of your circuits. Just enough so you can orient yourself. I'm sorry I can't give you back any of your movement. Talk to me. All right. 
Do you have a name? I mean, did you have a name before you became SJ381? Did you have a family? There was... There was something... In discussion, please. Emotions beyond computer capability. Why? Interference with programming. Did you volunteer for them to do this to you? No. They took me. I'm sorry. Priscilla's still retrieving data from the Vanguard log, sir. So far, she's got these two coming past the Vanguard Explorer. The first one dropped off our mechanical boogeyman. The second one came past six months later. On the same trajectory. Destination. Working. Takes her long enough, doesn't it? Priscilla, try this for an augmentation program. Why didn't I think of that? There's something else. Come back here, you little beast. Priscilla? Sorry, Captain. I was talking to the data. Can you actually see the data? I don't actually see anything. It's just there. Kind of hard to explain. Must be strange for you in there. It's a little spooky sometimes. Get your data? Well, no, not yet. But I've got them cornered. not supposed to be me oh oh okay. no it's not um i was just fooling around what is it well it's well you see I, i've always been kind of interested in in, in alien life forms so i was trying to figure out what it might be like on demeter when, when we get there oh if if we get there it's kind of cute um 
what I did is I pulled up all the information we have, you know, figuring out a similar environment, but with a completely independent evolution. You're not really interested in all this stuff, are you? Well, um, how come you gave it such big ears? Oh. Because cause the atmosphere is just a little thinner than ours. Um, sound wouldn't travel quite as well. So they need big ears and we would. <laughs> Got it. Total of six ships pass by Vanguard Explorer at regular intervals. Where were they going? Common point of rendezvous. Where, Priscilla? 28th Frontier, Sector 10. That's right on our course. Assembly. Priscilla, can you extrapolate the purpose of rendezvous? Negative. Insufficient information. I guess we'll find out when we get there. collision course with them. Assembly. Any suggestions? Yeah, get out of their way. Those are OTZ ships. I've seen them before back at Expo. I also have a weapons estimate. Go ahead. Overwhelming. Definitely a good time for a detour. A detour around what? First we gotta find out what they're doing. I've got their rendezvous point. Priscilla. That's the first thing that makes sense. They're rendezvousing at Twin Suns. That many ships, they need immense solar power, so they meet out there. See, those two suns are orbiting around each other, Jake. Right now, they're about to reach perigee, the, the closest point in their orbit. The closer they get, the more energy is directed along any given path. When will it be at maximum? In three hours, 17 minutes. Can we maneuver ourselves into the path of highest intensity? I'm sure we could. Why? So we can destroy them. Jonathan! It's dangerous. It's worth the risk. Beanie, how long would it take to reset our solar disk to reflect instead of store? I'd like a couple of days. Uh-uh. Give me three hours. Wait a second. What are you planning to do here? I'm going to create a solar laser. You could do that? Yep. We're going to need more than your railgun. It could work, assuming we don't fry the disks. Or ourselves. it's back what the blip the one that we saw back at expo it's right on our course and really moving identification no response and they just jammed my signal did you get an armament reading affirmative armed to the teeth they're moving faster than we are sir at this rate they'll catch us in two hours 27 minutes just when we intersect the otz ships just one more piece to the puzzle 
Let me see what you got on that thing. Well, at least it's smaller than the other. Captain, the railgun could at least disable that one if it gets close enough. How close? Very close. Willie, you remember how to operate a railgun? Sure. Then go to airlock 19 and check the response on the one I built, okay? Hell is loose. He's just left airlock 19. He's heading forward. Acknowledged. Jonathan, it was disconnected. I gave him back some of his control, but not movement. Well, guess what? Attention, maximum security alert. Oh, don't shoot it. It would still explode. Amend alert. Locate and advise position. Do not repeat. Do not fire. and it's moving towards the bridge. Seal bridge entryway. Do not fire. Was the ship damaged? Was the ship damaged? 
There appears to be some damage on the bridge. I can't get a reading of the extent. They have decreased their speed. I assume they're repairing. Match our speed to theirs. Maintain distance. Continue jamming. Much longer, Beanie. I don't know. Because until you fix Priscilla, we're flying blind. <clears throat> Can't you bring up any of the data on the OTZ ships? I'm trying, Jonathan. I'm sorry, Beanie, but the shell said while well, we still have time. We don't know how much time that is. Beanie, can you bring down a D-13 printed circuit? I can't right now. Then send somebody. I'll take it. Les has got it. Job on it. I'm sorry. I couldn't kill him. That's an admirable attitude, Doctor. You only got us all killed. Maybe I should turn into a hard nose like you. Sorry it took so long, Priscilla. Just think how fast you could have done it if you had my help. Is it fixed? Fixed. Two of the energy cells still aren't responding, sir. Can we still use the solar laser? Not a chance. To compensate, we'd have to be there precisely when the suns are at their closest point. There's only a five-second window even when we get there. And even then... I, I... don't think I want to hear anymore. Go on. That's... We have one shot. Priscilla, put the OTZ ships back on the screen. Yes, sir. You're linking together? Yes, sir. Before assembly. That's what Shell said, before capability for destruction. So what do you want to do? Oh, I was hoping you'd have an idea. Let's get out of here. What? There's six in front of us, something behind us, and we got one shot. What else can we do? Our mission is to get to Demeter, not to fight a battle. Huxley, put in new course coordinates away from the OTZ ships. Jonathan! Jake's right, there's nothing else we can do. You're just gonna run from the OTZ! He's doing the right thing. No, he's not! Come up with something, Beanie, right now, and I'll do it. Come on. I don't know, but something! Don't just run! The coordinates, Hux. Plot it in, sir. Come back here, Beanie. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. You did what you could. Excuse me, Captain. I have work to do. Star 
Voyager altering course, sir. New heading. 09.7. Increase speed and alter course per my orders. Captain, the blip. It's altered course away from the OTZ assembly and following us. Speed? Twice ours and increasing. Pursuit craft closing. Arming weapons. Jake, how many shots can the railgun give us? A total of three, but from this distance, none. Weapon section ready, Admiral. You will delegate weapons to my control. Understood. Yes, sir. You must be very, very careful. Base of course. Directly in front of us. The base of course. Course locked in. Firing again. Captain, I don't think she's trying to hit us. Look at the trajectories. And what are they trying to do? Looks like course reading. We're headed right back to the OTZ assembly. That's exactly what they want us to do. Please note visual on screen. Buzz. Lips right behind us. They got us trapped. Show me the suns. Yes, sir. Huxley, how long before our energy window? Five minutes, nine seconds to perigee. What choice do we have? It's better than nothing. We're gonna try the solar laser. You think it's gonna work? No. Start countdown at five minutes. Five. You ready, Mr. Beanstack? Yes, sir. Listen, if we get out of this, I'll stand you to dinner. We get out of this. My treat. Captain Brown, would you mind riding co -pilot? Yeah? Nothing. Just good luck. Thanks. You too. Course trajectory 45 and hold. Course 45, locked in. Priscilla, give me the ships. Yes, sir. Star Voyager in there? What are you doing? Just continue with your face. Hypothetical projection. Earth Star Voyager imposed on OTZ assembly. configurations. None. The design is unique. Jigsaw puzzle and we're the missing piece. Assembly. They've been waiting for us all along. They wanted the Voyager and I brought her here. We're not getting there that easily. All station alert. We need to lick the partner. Huxley, remaining time to convergence. Three minutes, 28 seconds.
Loop closing, Captain. Distance, 5,000 miles. Three minutes to perigee. Beanie. Establishing solar disk angle. Incoming message. Mm -hmm. Image on screen. Admiral Beasley. Hello, Jonathan. You've done well. Ah, uh, thank you. Admiral, we have an emergency. If you have visual, you'll see there's an assembly of OTZ spacecraft. We're planning to maneuver ourselves. Yes, I know. I see it on my scanners. If they're one unit short of completion, can you close and fire? Of course. But I was concerned for you, Jonathan. As a rule, shells are well nigh indestructible. How did you know we had a shell on board? Jonathan, the blip. It's the Triton Corsair. It's been the Triton Corsair all along. Admiral, you've been following us? And despite my best efforts, you lost me. You're very good. I chose you to be the best. But you're even better than I had hoped. But then you've known all along about... Captain Forbes and Lonnie Maiori. And regretted it, Jonathan. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not glory in destruction. But Voyager's mission is too important to allow anyone to jeopardize it. When serving the greater good, sacrifices are unfortunate, but they are inevitable and they must always, always be made. I tried to explain this to Captain Forbes. He never understood. But you do. Admiral, I do not understand. Remember the purpose of the mission, Jonathan. To ensure the survival of the species. To ensure the survival of those fools back on Earth? No. We go on to Demeter. We establish the human race there in, a, in the highest form possible. A form that will continue for millions of years. It is our obligation. And how does the OTZ fit into that? A large workforce is necessary to prepare for the culmination of the project. We use the tools that come to hand. You've learned that as captain, haven't you? Now you want Earth Star Voyager to join those ships. Voyager has the computer. The fusion thrust engines, the Bauman drive, yes, I need those to get to Demeter. But most importantly, I need you. All of you. Priscilla, end the Admiral's transmission. Priscilla, end transmission! I can't. There's some kind of control in here. I thought it was just extra storage space. No, Priscilla. Not extra storage space. Professor Bauman's computer is vital to the plan. She will become the command center of our ship. Our ship? A ship you've proven yourself worthy of, Jonathan. Now everything is complete. No. You refuse. Perhaps I should address the rest of your crew. Do you think they will all refuse? Why, Admiral Beasley, you sound like you're planning a mutiny. <laughs> Jake Brown. Forever turning up where you're not wanted. It's a talent I have. Permission to address your entire crew. Jonathan, get his attention. Permission granted. Crew of Earth Star Voyager, this is Admiral Beasley. I offer you an opportunity unparalleled in human history. With imagination and courage, you can rewrite the story of your entire race. You can correct the mistakes of the past, thousands of years. Priscilla, where's that control? 50 seconds of parity. It it's there on your left. Will you or will you not? Follow on the paths 
mapped out by your ancestors. Already really? in... What? If you take them all out, that's me. Would we lose everything? No, just me. I'm sorry, Priscilla. The world of the future will look back on what you created. Speak your names with reverence. Axley, can you get manual? Got it. Jonathan, what have you done? Resuming navigation. Sons. Raise discs. Disc in position. Rotation. Disc rotating now. Two degrees off course. How long? Six seconds. Half a degree off course. Just coming into alignment. On course. Oh. Two. One. Zero. Convergence! Triton Corsair approaching. Are we close enough to use a railgun? Not yet. She's got to come to at least a thousand miles. Arm weapons, stand by. Sir. Corsair just activated her weapons. It's still closing on us, sir. Don't worry. Jonathan will do something. Get him closer. Switch Priscilla to receive. Earth Star Voyager to Triton Corsair. Admiral, can you hear me? Admiral Beasley, please respond. Admiral, please respond. Be kind enough to fine-tune communications, Jonathan. It seems you skewed your communications when you reprogrammed your computer. The damage can be repaired, Admiral. I'm glad to hear it. Very clever idea, building a solar laser. Once again, you live up to my expectations. My clever idea destroyed your assembly. As you said, the damage can be repaired. It's not too late, Jonathan. Give me the Voyager. I've been thinking about what you said, Adam. Have you? And I agree with you that we have a responsibility to humanity and that each of us is insignificant compared to that responsibility Jonathan what are you doing a pity you didn't come to this realization before destroying the OTZ assembly yes sir but uh, 1250 miles we can rebuild we still have the computer. 1173, a little closer, Jonathan. And if you recall, Admiral, Mr. Beanstalk helped to uh, create the computer. I'm sure that he can use it to help repair the damages. 
Mr. Beanstalk appears less than willing. He's still very young, Admiral. Now. And once again, Captain Brown runs away. I never did understand why you took him on board, Jonathan. I thought he might prove useful. Without the Voyager, your plan is useless, Admiral. All your work for nothing. Exactly what have you got up your sleeve? Sir? You're stalling for time. What are you planning? How could I be planning anything? You saw to it yourself. We have no weapons. Very well, then. Prove yourself. Prepare to be boarded from Triton Corsair. Prepare for boarding. What? Prepare for boarding? I warn you, Jonathan. If you're trying to trick me, my armaments will destroy you. Destroy the ship you conceived, sir? The key to humanity's future? You're very bright, John. I hope so, sir. When we dock together, you'll have justified my faith in you. We're right on top of them. They've got our navigation. No! Sorry about that, Admiral. Armament section destroyed, sir. Report. Weapons and navigation centers destroyed. Auxiliary power sufficient for minimum life support only. How long to repair? Undetermined until further inspection, sir. Jonathan, can you hear me? You are very good. I expect to renew our relationship. Someday. Said the railgun would work. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Come on up, Jake. I think maybe Huxley might want to apologize. Well, obviously some people are too well mannered to gloat. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jake? Jake. Jake. Jake, can you hear me? Wake up! I'm afraid he's gonna slip into a coma. Come on, Jake. Come on. Who's hitting me? Do you know your name? Tell me your name, please! My name's Jake Brown, ma'am. You want me at dinner? Jonathan, Lonnie is stabilized. She's almost normal. I don't understand it. Excuse me. Mr. Beanstalk. Yes, sir. So, do 
do you think you're going to be able to get Priscilla back to her old charming self? Oh, yeah, sure. She mostly is already. All I have to do is hook up her vocal circuits. You can skip that part, Bean. Watch your mouth, cute stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Doomed. <laughs> Maybe the real one will be waiting for you when you get back to her. Yeah, that'd be just what I need. Mm -hmm. Did you ever meet Priscilla Bauman? No. Would you like to, Huxley? That's Priscilla? And she loves me? And she wants me? And that's only my picture, Huxley. <sighs> you stood that up? Talks too much. So how you feeling? I sure hope this planet we're headed for is worth all this. So do I. It is. Beanie, I know that expression. What have you done? Well, I wanted to show you when I was finished. But we kind of got busy. Beanie, what? Well, you know those degraded images on the meter we saw in the briefing? Uh-huh. Well, I've been working on it in my spare time, and I figured out a way to fill in the missing data. This is the meter. Beanie did most of this, but I helped. <laughs> Watch this, Beanie. This to me. I mean, after I put you back together. I'm sorry, Beanie, but it has been on your mind, hasn't it? Now, would you like to see the meter? Captain, I think we ought to go check that place out. Market openings, overseas economic reports, and the first business news every morning. Watch ABC's World News This Morning's business reports before Good Morning America. This is Spencer Christian. Tomorrow, a visit with actress Angelica Houston and a new voice on the top of the charts. Taylor Dane joins us. Plus, our special co-host for the week, Mary Hart on Good Morning America. Okay, Cosalari, I'm ready. How do I look? It doesn't matter how you look, Balky. No one can see us. Well, of course they can, but they're ridiculous. They'll be watching Perfect Strangers Wednesday. 